Hi everyone, my name is Joanna. Today's topic is all about deep learning for text data. You can do a variety of things with text data and deep learning, like make new text. So if you're given a model uh, with a lot of writing examples in a certain style, um, you can use deep learning to help make up new stories in that same style. So if you're given a lot of Shakespeare, you can create new stories in the style of Shakespeare, which is actually pretty cool. You can also make new predictions. So for example, I'm given a lot of text data of a certain category I like or dislike. Deep learning can learn those preferences and predict which categories I'm going to like in the future. And today we'll focus on both of those examples. We're going to make new text in a certain style and we're gonna make predictions based on text data. So I'm going to introduce two code examples using text data, using text for wine and using text for beer. The first is going to be all about beer. We're going to create new beer names using deep learning and LSTMs. So we're going to use names of beer as input, input them into the network to make new completely made up names. And all of this is going to be happening using deep learning. So let's go through the code. Uh, most of the text examples that you're going to see in deep learning are going to be focused on data preparation. And it makes sense. We wanna make sure that our data is working properly for the network and the network can handle everything that is related to text nuances. Uh, this might be not required for things like images or signals, uh, but instead for text data, this is something that might not be very obvious at first, but you wanna ask questions of, how does your network handle spaces or special characters or things like punctuation that might come up in some of your input data? And so these are the challenges of working with text data that aren't necessarily things that you think about for images and signals. So to start with this pre-processing, we wanna replace all of our spaces with a middle dot. We're gonna put a, a, uh, a beginning character and an end character to kind of start and end the phrases. So you can see this in the text right here. You're gonna have a start of text character, you're gonna have a white space character, and then you're gonna have an end of text character. So you've got your predictors, that's the input, and then you have the responses, which is the output. So start of text character, replace all of your spaces with that middle dot. And then you're going to do the exact same thing for the responses and then your end of text character. So we can kind of see an example of what this might look like here. The input is going to just be a whole bunch of numbers. Um, it might not look very you know, intuitive to you, but the, that's what the network is expecting as input. And then the output is going to be this string of letters, which is going to be the new beer names that we're expecting. And you can actually see here that 101 is repeated here, and that corresponds to the two E's that you see in the, in the output as well. So after you construct a fairly simple network, um, at least to me, this is pretty as simple as it gets, and you select your training options, then you train the network. And what you're going to see here is that the network actually doesn't do very well in terms of accuracy. And that's actually okay. That's actually something that we want because if you had an accuracy of let's say 100%, it was going to be learning the input and the output exactly. But we wanna generalize and we wanna generate new text. Um, so it's totally fine that this network is only getting to be about 20%. And this training plot is probably not the best indication of how well your network is going to do in the future. After this trains, you can generate new text using a generate text helper function. And then after that, you get a whole list of new names that have never been used before. Some of these make a lot of sense. Some of these might not. Uh, for example, 1555, to me, that doesn't really scream beer. Uh, but uh, let's see, the, the country IPA, that's something that you know you would maybe expect to see in a grocery store. Um, so here are some of the random beer names. You can play around with this code, and we have links in the description below for how you can get access to this code as well. So that's all about beer. Now let's move on to wine for all of the wine aficionados in, in the area. Uh, this example is going to be all about classifying wine data. So, I, And I'm also going to show some pretty cool visualizations at the end, so stay tuned for that too. So this is a typical classification problem. We wanna have input, which is the description, and then we're going to output a category based on that. So given a certain wine description, can I predict what type of wine this is going to be? 
So the beginning, once again, is all about pre-processing the data so that you can understand. Once again, there's a lot of nuances of text data. And so the majority of your time, if you're working with text data, this is going to be spent here. Things like tokenizing your data, uh, things like word embeddings, all of this is very standard across text problems. But the majority of the code is going to be talking about pre-processing. Finally, you can load in your data, you can explore your reviews. But what I really want to start talking about is once you do all of this pre-processing, now you're going to want to uh, get your text ready for the training. So here we want to partition our data. We're setting aside 30% to the testing, and we want to have around 70% for training. And the other interesting thing about kind of pre-processing your data here is that we want to see what the review lengths are. So the network is going to expect everything to be a certain size. So we need to standardize on a certain size for the reviews. And you can see that the majority of these reviews are under 80 words. And so we'll, let's say we can standardize on 80 words. Once we do that, uh, you can look and see what the network architecture is going to look like. This is going to be a little bit different than our first example. And this actually looks like a more complicated network. So one question that you might ask is, how do I get started with text data and how do I know which network to use? And typically what I would recommend is starting with a network that has been proven to work for text classification. And that's exactly what you're looking at here. So this was copied from another text example. And now we can use this for our text example as well. Finally, you can select the training options and then you can train the network. And this is just like you were training another network for images, signals, and, and now text. And what you can see here in this training is it's going to take a significantly long time, I would say. If you pretty much zoom in on this, it's going to take roughly around maybe two hours or so to be able to train this network well. Another thing to look at is this is the validation accuracy. And the validation accuracy is actually capping out right around 60% or so. Um, this might mean that you might want to investigate the network because it's not generalizing well um, and that it might be overfitting the data as well. Here we want to have a high accuracy, whereas in the first example, we didn't necessarily need a high accuracy. But here a high accuracy says for a certain description, I'm going to have the right category uh, as, as, as an accurate representation in my model. Finally, we can look at how the network does on new data after the network is trained. So this is data that the network has never seen before. So let's pick one example. This says the description is pale straw in color, zesty citrus fruit, et cetera, et cetera. And if we look down here, we expect this to be Sauvignon Blanc. So let's see how the network does when it classifies this data. The third one down, we expect it to be Sauvignon Blanc and it was predicted as Sauvignon Blanc as well. So for this particular example, uh, this works very well. It's nice to know whether or not the network got something right or wrong, but in wine, it might be a little bit more subjective. Like, how do we know that that's the right answer? So instead, what I'd like to ask is which words most influence the decision? So we're going to use something called occlusion mapping or occlusion sensitivity in this case, and we're going to be able to predict which words most affected the outcome. What's nice here is you can see the string of the description. And here we're talking about straw colored, hint of greenness, peaches and nectarines. This is a very good example of a lot of words, but what words most affected the outcome of this network? And here we can use occlusion sensitivity to do that. So here you can see the straw colored actually doesn't have very much of an influence on the network at all. However, the peaches and nectarine has a high score, slightly sweet also has a high score, and notes of lychee also has a very high score. So now we can say the reason the network picked this particular class is because of these words. And while this is originally intended for images and signals, it also works really well for text data too and can give you insight into the network. So that's it for that example as well. We covered both wine and beer today. 
And if you'd like to learn more about these examples that we saw today, start with my blog post in the links below, which covers the information of what we discussed today, but in more detail, plus links to the full code. So I hope you found today's video useful or at least somewhat entertaining. Subscribe to our channel to see more videos like this and thanks for watching.